The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Uh, okay, uh, looking good, uh, Billy Ray. I'm feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look here at the bonds here over the last five trading days. Uh, this was the trade of the day that I posted for the video last night. I thought that we would get down to 10803. That would be another ABCD, no different than the one we were looking at here. Well, we got to 05, and then we had the big rally. Then the uh, JP came on. Uh, G Hold on just a second, folks. I think I got a problem. Let me sit here. Oh, gee whiz. I don't know how that works. I Time out. Just a second. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. Hold on just a minute here. This might be okay. Oh, all righty. Let's get this up here. Okay. Let me know it's all right. All right. Would you, uh, Jacob, please? I'd really like to know where Al, who's ever there. Anyway, this is the last few days we're seeing the market come down. Folks, this is a three drive to a bottom pattern right here. This is a pretty big bottom. As you can see, there's drive one, there's drive two, there's drive three. Give me one second to make sure this is running here right. Can you see? No, you can't see it now? Ah, boys and girls, I'm about ready to sing old Sinatra. You can't see it, huh? Well, I did it the right way. There it is. I go in here, I come up here to hit change screens, and I go to change screens, and I go to the private screen, which is screen one, and I click on that, and let's see if it's working now. Maybe it's working now. Let's try it. Well, somebody's going to let me know, maybe not. Well, the one thing I do know, Bubba, that the days of me doing this stuff are very, very close to coming to an end. I don't know if it's working or not, so I'll just talk to myself. I'm the only, well, at least when I do that, I know someone's listening. This is the three drive. This is over the last three days. There's drive one, there's drive two, and there's drive three. Now, if that's the case, there should be some symmetry between that. So there's drive one right there, there's drive two right there. The day should be today, okay? We were looking for 8503, you got to 8107, Whether that's right or not, I don't know, but that is it. Now, what I did do is this morning when I saw this big rally, the first thing I did is I want to see what the last big rally was. Let me try something else right here, see if it's working. It's working. Oh, my God, what happened? All right, let me get this back up here. There, oh, That's the wrong thing. There we go. I wanted to see, that was a 382, if you remember from that previous high, I wanted to uh, well, now nobody's saying they can't see the charts. I don't know what's wrong. Oh, man, I can't take it anymore. Anyway, from the high down here to the... Ah, shucks. Jacob, I'm getting feedback from people on Skype that they can't see the charts. What What's going on? I don't understand. Everybody else sees the charts. I don't understand. Who else doesn't? I'm going to do this. Uh, I've had enough... Uh, well, i tell you what I would do. If it were me today, and I didn't have Jeff Huge on the line here today, I would say, sayonara, sayonara. Okay, that's what I'm looking at in the bonds. Second one here, big, big, big thing going, big thing. Hey, whoever's Skyping me, please stop Skyping. Please, please stop Skyping me, okay? Because that just messes me up. Thank you very much. I appreciate the help, but... Okay, here's where we were today. Really important. This is the, let's go to a longer, we're going to go to the 13 minutes so we can see the whole day. There's where we were. Notice, folks, what we did today. Now, remember, we're supposed to be trying to find a bottom today. You remember the daily chart that we looked at yesterday? This is supposed to be a bottom. This is supposed to be a bottom. That's what we want to be looking for, okay? There's your A, B, C, D. That's what we want to see is A, B equal C, D. And there it is. There's A, B equals C, D. And where do it come in at? 
Where do it come in at, boys and girls? Oh, I think it. I think the 618 is 09, and it got to 15. Hold on one second. I must be because I didn't get filled. Hold on one second right here. Yeah, see, it was 09. The low was... 15 so it missed it by uh, quite a bit in here so but that should have been a bottom now there's several things that tell us that it may be a bottom let's go back to that 13 minute one and look at it remember we watched this thing all the way down here okay there was your there was your first 382 right here look at this folks there was your first 382 was right there it went from there all the way down here and then gp is speaking and it makes an a b c d right up here that's when he called me and he said, get short. And then, of course, the market broke it down. I was supposed to get long at 43.10. I didn't get filled, but I was out of my short when it made below these lows. And now what I'm looking at is the market's rallying back up again. So it's acting pretty good. If we can get it to close above 43.72, that's going to be a good deal because that means this daily chart that we're possibly looking at has a pretty good bottom in place. As long as we don't get below, we close below 4309, there's something wrong. But if we don't close before 4309, something good could happen with it, okay? All right, we've got another one. Oh, the one of them, <laughs> I just love this. You know, I don't, <laughs> all this work I did through all these years, I wonder what the hell did I do? And I said, I never should have shared it with anybody actually, but that's not what God wanted me to do. Here's the gold, folks. There's your target, 1976. The high has been 1977. It's trading in 1974. There's A, B, C, D. That was the first one right here. Packed off seven bucks, and now we've had another rally up in here to 14, 1975. So this should be a pretty good move here, and so uh, to, should correct in a uh, gold. <laughs> should correct in gold. All right, let's take a quick break here. Take a look at the silver market. It should be much weaker. Oh, my goodness. Talk about weak. Shut the front door and raise the rent. It can't even go to – look at the there, – there was our 382 from yesterday. Remember I said I'd sell it there? I never really did, but it – well, I lost 75 bucks Anyway, it pulled down a little bit, but look at this one, folks. Look at this. You like 382? Look what's happened. We've had a high here. And a low here, and look at this. It's hit it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. It's hit that three, eight, two retracement. That tells you that silver is probably getting ready to go down. Now, I wouldn't sell silver here because I just sold the gold at 1975 with a four dollar stop. So I don't know if that's going to work or not, but we're going to keep a close eye on that one. So that's what we're watching here uh, in the silver market uh, today. I already covered the thing with the Walmart. Uh, head and shoulders pattern that we looked at but uh, I've had uh, several people have asked me about 382 I'll be covering that in the live show that I'm going to be doing November 15th that's going to be my last one I'm not sure I'm going to do any next year but I promised TF and I'd do two this year and uh, we'll get that one done on November 15th and it's going to be a good deal because it's going to be half price, folks. It's only going to be $144, and the goal is to make money. I'm going to be doing some teaching in between, but the goal is to make money, and you'll be followed through with these trades by videos for 30 days. So that'll be a good deal. That's November 15th, $144 U.S. dollars. Let's take a little break here, and we'll move right back to... Uh, Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors.
Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I got a couple of emails from people questioning the value of 3A2. And they say, how do you know that it works? Well, I look at a lot of different things. But the main value of 3A2 is for really strong trending markets and telling you that the trend is changing. Okay? So that's, that's the main thing that you want to be looking at. But let's take a look at two of the really strong stocks. And all I'm going to do, I've not done this before. So all I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be looking at Eli Lilly. I'm going to go back and you see this market has been going straight up from 110 to, it hit 630 just the other day. Now, all I want to do is I'm going to check on some of these larger ones in here to see if we were looking at 3A2 patterns. So there's your first major correction. Well, there's there's one right here. I don't know if I can make it big enough or not. Look, yeah, I don't think I can. Nah, charts are too small. Oh, you know what? Uh, weekly might do it. Let me double check here. Hold on. Let me check and see. Yeah, weekly does it just fine. There you go. Okay, here's your first correction. You can see that's a little more than 3A2. There's your next correction. So I want to check that. So you go from your low up to your high. There it is, exactly 3A2. Now you've got another 3A2 coming in right here. Okay, so you've got a higher high. Okay, so you've got to use that higher high. So all you want to do now is to go down to the low that you had right back here because that's a big cycle. You come all pull up. There it is again, 382. Folks, I swear to you on my mother's grave in the eyes of my children, I have never looked at this stock before on a weekly. I hardly ever look at it ever, but I'm just trying to show you the importance of the 382. Now, you have another correction here, but you have a slightly higher high, so you'd have to figure that one. Then you start going up, and you get very little resistance here. So all we're going to do now is there's your last low right here. Okay, so you have another high right here. So you go and look at this one from your low up to your high. Stops exactly at the 382. You can see it again. Now look at this one. This is a really big one here. So this should tell us something a lot. So you have a higher high and a lower low. It closes near the low of the range. But that is a very important low. Now let's just go see where it could be. Okay. What I'm looking at right now is I want to measure this low right back here because that's the lowest low that I can see. It might not make it, but I'll have to value it out a little bit here and it misses it by a little bit so it's probably the low of this one and then i want to see because that's a really big low too and you'll see where does it come to 
Oh, this one misses it by a little bit. So it misses the 382 here. On a $300 stock, it misses it by $7. Then we start the big run-up, and there's very little retracement here. You can see no 382 retracements at all. This is your first big one that you had right here. Now, if this is any good, this should be 382 off of that price right there. And I, I don't know if it is, but we're going to check it. There's your low there's your high, and I'm not going to be eating any pumpkin pie because it misses it by quite a bit. So this is still in a runaway market. I have a little bit of a pullback here, but even that's not a 382 little pullback here. I don't believe that's a 382. So that part, it doesn't work all the time. It worked, it worked well, that's a 50% retracement. So it worked pretty good. Not on the runaway, it's just no 382's retracement here. To even look at. Now look at this next one. I don't even know what this stock is. This is uh, wow. Just lost uh, five bucks in gold. Holy cow! Didn't take very long, did it? Hold on one second here. There's a chance that it's five dollars didn't work. Okay, here's the. Uh, there it is. Uh, let's get this moving up here. Same thing. I'm just going to do it from the larger ones here, just to see where we are. I don't know. I think it's Nova Disc or something like that. There's your low right here. Uh, there's your high. Look, look at that. There's 382 right here. And then, you know, we start going up. Here's a really major one right here. We should have another 382 right in here somewhere. Let's just see how close that one comes. Yeah, that misses it by quite a bit. But these are real strong stocks. But you want to be watching for the 382. This is a really big one right in here, but it can't even make a 25% retracement. Let's see what it did off of the smaller low right in here. That wouldn't even have been very much. Yeah, 50% there. But anyway, pay attention to those 382s. They are very, very important. Let's look at the gold and see what happened here. This is one of those where those uh, – didn't work very well. See, I sold it at 75. I had a $4 stop in it at 79, so I lost $400. But we went up and made new highs now on this run. As you can see here, we got all the way up to the 78% level, folks. That number is uh, <laughs> 1886, and the high has been 1885 on this run right here. Now, let's take a look at the same time since we were looking at silver and that was the one to sell because it was much weaker. But as I do sometimes, mess up occasionally. And look, silver hardly did anything. Look, it just hardly did anything at all. It probably all it made was a, well, you can see, well, there's the 382 right here. There's your high, a little bit above it, but not by much. Yeah, that, that came in here at 05, and it got to uh, 10 or 12 on this run here. So this would have been the one to sell because it was weaker, but that's okay. It, that's neither here nor there. I have to move on to the next one here. Okay, that's pretty much what we're watching now. And uh, I've got one other one with the stock part, and that was with uh, Target. Someone, Oh, Tesla, not Target, Tesla. Hold on, here's Tesla. Uh, asked me to take a look at Tesla, and this is a 15-minute. You see it's down about 20 Fifteen percent or something today. Looking at the daily, all I all I want to all I want to mention to you folks is this right here. All we're doing in Tesla, folks, is making a really nice A B C D for a buy down in here. This is all I want to show you. There's your last low. There's your A B C D. Two hundred one. You're down about twenty bucks more, and you're going to be in this level right here. What I wanted to tell you was right here. This is when the dudes came out from. No, no, we're this one right here. This is the this is the Morgan Stanley thing just a month or so ago. They came out and said, you know, this stock is going to 440. That was the target that they gave it, 440. Okay, and it was trading at around 230, something like that. We gapped up about 20 bucks and went a little bit higher to 786 and left this little tiny island that got filled here. And there's your 135 pattern. And the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention, folks, just because you see a report from Goldman Sachs that crude oil is going to $200 or that Tesla is going to $440, people have ulterior motives when they tell you that. Believe me, if they think that thing was going to go higher, they would not be uh, – You know, <laughs> when, they, when they put the calls on and they have a big move the next day, I – 
I know the SEC should check this stuff, but they don't always. Anyway, that just keep an open mind on this, okay, folks? That's why I, I want to, you know, remind yourself of that. As to, and believe me, I, if I spent all the times on the mistakes that I've made, uh, with, this show would last about 24 hours a day, seven days a week. A perfect one was right there in the gold market. I did look ahead a time, and I should have been up there selling at that 6 to 78% level, but I didn't see it until just now so uh i'm going to sell it again here at uh, 1980 and i'm going to risk seven dollars on this one so i lost four on the first one and i'm going to try another one that would be an 11 dollar loss if i hear so i'm going to sell it here at 1980 with a stop at 1987 so that's what i'm watching here okay 10-4 rubber duck let's move on here and i'll be right back with jeff huge of alpha insights Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks. We're speaking with uh, Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights, and we're having a lot of ups and downs today, my friend. What are you seeing here today, Jeff? Well, we sure are, uh, Larry. Let me tell you, it's uh, the Fed uh, chairman speaks and the market goes crazy. But, um, you know, we're, we're not too worried about uh, the market making new highs anytime soon. Uh, yesterday, recall, we were down 
well over a percent. I think we're up maybe 17 or 18 basis points right now. So, uh, you know, a little volatility out there. <laughs> what are you showing here with speculative frenzy uh, hitting extremes? Tell us what you're looking at here, uh, Jeff. Yeah, you know, let me let me just uh, point out that this uh, this is the speculative con conservative ratio. Uh, it's a ratio that uh, was created by Peter Alides of Stock Market Cycles fame. Uh, and it's a great measure of structural investor sentiment. The indicator really compares investor demand for speculative growth stocks as represented by the NASDAQ 100 uh, compared to um, the demand for conservative dividend paying utility stocks as represented by the Dow Jones utility average. And so when the NDX uh, utility average ratio is trending up, then you know the demand for speculative stocks is dominating the demand for conservative stocks and vice versa. The ratio actually hit a level of 16.5 to 1 back in March 2000. That was a record that stood unchallenged until 2021 when the Fed pumped in $9 trillion of monetary and fiscal policy support, and that sent stocks soaring into the stratosphere. And then we saw that minor pullback that's evident up there uh, in the chart last year in 2022 when we experienced the uh, first phase of what I think will be a long-term bear market. And since that, we've rallied back to a new all-time record extreme last week of 18.1 to 1. This tells me that the, the, the speculative juices uh, have continued to flow and uh, they're alive and well, despite what all the shorter-term uh, measures such as the put call ratio and the VIX and some of the survey data might suggest. Okay, that like, makes really good sense. Let's get your next chart up here, and I hope it'll pop up like the other one did without too much trouble. This is market breath uh, collapsing. Boy, I, I can see that just by watching the tape. I mean, it's been pretty tough. <laughs> Let's get this up here. I think it's okay Recall now. That last week when I was on the show, I showed uh, the performance of a whole variety of different uh uh, uh, indexes. And what we saw is that, you know, the Magnificent Seven, these large cap, mega cap growth stocks are just dominating the tape. But under that thin veneer, everything else is just basically flat. In fact, the average stock in the S&P 500 is up just 1% as we speak. And so, you know, this, this historically uh, narrow market <clears throat> advance is very consistent with uh, the conditions that would exist before a major trend reversal. Here, we're looking at the percentage of stocks that are trading above their 200-day moving average, and we've got the NYSE on one side, that's about 2,200 stocks. And then the NASDAQ composite on the right-hand side, that's about 3,500 stocks. So, you know, an aggregation of about 5,700 stocks, well, a full 87% of those U.S. stocks are now trading below their 200-day moving average. And uh, so far, during the month of October, uh, the number of stocks making new 52-week lows has actually outnumbered the number of stocks making new 52-week highs by a ratio of 10 to 1. Uh, that is extraordinarily narrow and weak uh, internally, underneath the hood, underneath the, the thin veneer of what the uh, averages are telling you in terms of their year-to-date performance. Wow, we're really let's get the next one up here. It's amazing the volatility that we're having, and I think it's just starting. I think we're going to see as the market. Oh, gee whiz! Your broad structural. Uh, this is a really interesting one, folks. You're going to like this one. This is your uh, Elliott Wave broad market and structural decline, and boy, it certainly looks that way, doesn't it? Well, you know, everybody wants to focus on the S and P 500, but you know, because of the heavy concentration of these top 10 mega cap stocks. It's completely distorted what's happening underneath the hood. We take a look at the broad market from two different lenses. On the left-hand side, we can look at the Russell 2000. These are the 2,000 smallest stocks uh, in the U.S. And, and, you know, some people say this market doesn't even matter anymore because the market cap of the Russell 2000, these ent the entirety of these 2,000 stocks is less than the market cap of Apple computer these days. So, uh, but if we look at the right-hand side, the value line composite, that index actually contains the Magnificent Seven. In fact, it is the 17 largest stocks in the United States, but it's equally weighted. And that 1,700 companies produces 90% of the, the revenue of 
of all publicly traded stocks. So this is really important to think about these this broad market. Well, at the end of the day, you know, following the initial decline, which you know we're illustrating is either wave A or wave one down, depending how you want to think about it. Um, you know, the Russell 2000 and the value line composite each have uh, retraced, you know, a, a, a standard kind of amount of 50 percent retracement, which is, you know, essentially what one would expect. In the case of the value line, we almost got to 61.8 percent, more like uh, uh, just shy of that. And, and so, you know, the retracement was a normal retracement if we're looking at the broad market. What we've seen since that time is both of these indexes have not just broken below their 200-day moving averages, but they've actually broken below their 200-week moving averages. In addition, they've breached trend support off their October 2022 lows, and those trend lines have multiple touch points. So these are significant uh, uptrends that have been violated. But here's the really interesting thing, Larry. Uh, the 200-day moving average has actually crossed below the 200-week moving average in the case of the value line. And in the case of the Russell 2000, that's actually happening today. So, you know, I think, you know, the violation of these key technical levels really suggests to us that the broad U.S. equity market is in the very early stages of a major structural decline. Now, obviously, we've used some Elliott wave analysis here as well. And on the left-hand side, with respect to the Russell 2000, we see it as an ABC corrective waveform. But the Russell's a totally different animal than the S&P, whereas the value line includes all 500 of the S&P stocks. And uh, when we look at the value line composite, it is the clearest representation of what's happening in the market. And we see a clear five-wave decline, which we think is wave one of five at a larger degree, a primary degree of trend. And we saw a three-wave corrective waveform that took us to the high in February, which has not been challenged since. That, we think, is primary wave two. So we're in the very early stages of primary wave three down, and we think we're in minor wave three of, of intermediate wave one of primary three. So this is a big, big deal. It's a third of a third wave decline. And we think it could carry, uh, in fact, both of these, uh, uh, you know, patterns call for a significant and immediate decline in the, in the major averages. It's truly amazing when you see this thing unfold. And Jeff, you really have to put a feather in your cap because, you know, you've been telling it this for months. And it's been, uh, we had a couple of big rallies in between, but they faded. We've got to pay a few bills. Could you stay with us? And we'll be right back. You bet. Jeff Huge Alpha Insights, folks. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. 
Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, I'm back. Oh, dear. Sorry about that, folks. Hell, 10-4, rubber duck. Where do I stand? What's going on? Uh, it's, uh, are you there, Jeff? I am here, Larry. Oh, sorry for the interruption. But I forgot the day's the day that Carlos comes to do my car, and I had to let him into the garage. So that's why I had to run out. I'm sorry. Let's talk about the interest rates, pal, because uh, – I talked, to, I talked to Jerome Powell before his speech today, and he reiterated the fact that rates were going to go higher, and you're looking at 10.5%. Is that what you're looking at, Jeff? You know, uh, there's, a, there's an interesting situation that's developing here. We, we see a new bullish regime for rates unfolding before our very eyes. Uh, yeah. We think rates will continue to rise in a structural uptrend over the next decade. But of course, Larry, prices never move in a straight line, as you well know. And, and while we have a lot of these you know, headwinds, the deficit, the debt to GDP ratio, the supply of new treasuries coming into the market, this is all gonna continue to be a headwind for bond market investors. But as you know, the authorities will attempt to maneuver around these overwhelming obstacles. And in so doing, they may actually temporarily delay the inevitable, which is a rise to 10 and a half. And so, you know, we see the process of rising rates occurring in stages, which will very likely respond to the key resistance levels that we've loosely outlined in this chart here, uh, you know, in line essentially with the path that we've illustrated with the blue arrow. And, you know, we think this could take a 10 to 12 year period before we arrive at that ultimate high of 1050. Um, if you take a look at the top frame of this chart, this is probably the most important thing that we've uncovered. And that is the 60 month momentum study uh, at this, uh, at the top frame of the chart indicates a shift to a new bullish momentum regime for rates. And what we see is that the period uh, before rates began their big 40-year downtrend, uh, we saw momentum was clearly above the 50% median line, right? We were in a bullish momentum regime. But since that time, for the last 35 years, up recently, we had been below that median line and never once challenged it or pierced it above that 50% median line, which, which created, in our view, a bearish regime for rates. And now, of course, in recent uh, months, uh, we've seen a breakout above that 50% uh, that median line again in the momentum study. And that suggests to us that we're in a very structural new uh, momentum regime to the upside for rates. And so, you know, our initial upside target, as we've been saying for many months, remains 5.3%. We put out a range of 495 to uh, 540, and we actually hit uh, 495 this morning. It's now almost 5% as we speak. And in fact, uh, we think the market will push up to around five and a quarter, 530 before this initial move is complete. 
Now, that could take weeks to months. We're suggesting it would happen sometime before the end of this year. And then, of course, we think, you know, we could see some evidence of recession begin to emerge where we think Fed, uh, uh, Powell and the Fed could take some action. They could, you know, dial back their QT. They could uh, cut rates. They could remain on pause for an extended period of time. And this may cause 10-year yields back up into the four and a half percent range and you know basically uh, we see this sort of backing and filling where these you know obvious support and resistance levels will will act as kind of a ping pong mechanism where you know the, the rates will move up they'll hit resistance they'll back off to support the rally into the next resistance back off to support rally into the next resistance so we've got some targets here after we get through 5.3 we think you know within the next 12 months we could hit six and a half percent. In the next three years, we think we could hit 7.8%. In the next, you know, five to seven years, we think we could get to 9%. And then we think a final push up to around 10.5%, looking out, say, 10 years to 12 years into the future. Wow, that's amazing. That's not going to be good for real estate, I wouldn't think. Now we're going to talk about the uh, Elliott Wave Theory, and it looks pretty clear what we're watching here on this uh, longer-term chart here. Yeah, um, you know, the situation is as follows. Um, you know, we, we believe that the market has already put in its um, its first of five wave declines. So wave one, uh, primary wave one, ended last year in October of 2022. And for the bulk of this year, through uh, through July 27th, we've been in a counter-trend advance that peaked on July 27th. And since that time, we've been tracing out what appears to us to be uh, the first wave down of primary wave three. So we'll call it intermediate wave one. And so intermediate wave one is subdivided at minor degree and minute degree of trend. And so, you know, we've, we've labeled it minor wave one down. That bottomed in uh, basically around uh, August 18th. We rallied back uh, to a high minor wave two, and that occurred around September 1st. Since that time, we've traced out five waves down potentially or a portion of five waves down. We're, we're initially thinking that this is a complex correction that we've seen since around September 27th to uh, the 17th of October, and that looks like an expanded flat to us. And if we're right about that, we should see stocks break down sometime between now and October 28th to hit uh, our next target level, which is about 4,100 on the S&P 500. That's where the 377-day simple moving average comes into play, and also it's a measured move down from the obvious sort of classic pattern top formation of the head and shoulders variety that we've illustrated. And if that plays out, and, you know, Thomas Bolkowski's calculated the odds of this. He says it's about a 68% probability that we're going to see that target met. So if we do see that play out, we think it will happen before October 28th. And the reason for that is that's a key Montgomery cycle turn date. This is Paul McRae Montgomery's cycle work. He identified a big solar eclipse to occur on Saturday, which it did the 14th. We topped three days later. That's within the range. And the next um, cycle turn date occurs on a lunar eclipse, which is October 28th. And we think that will mark the next low. We then should see a counter trend advance into the next lunar cycle date, which is November 13th. That's the next Montgomery cycle turn date. We think that'll mark uh, probably minor wave four. And then we'll see a plunge down into November 27th, which should end the cycle and end uh, intermediate wave one down. From there, we could see a pretty significant counter trend advance, year end rally, if you will. And that's kind of how we're viewing things uh, as we go into uh, the balance of the year, uh, Larry. Jeff, tell us about your newsletter, Jeff. It's a home run, and it's, what, 12 bucks a month or something? It's very, very reasonable, I can yeah, tell yeah. you that. You, you can get half of it for free, you know, if you just sign up at hugeinsights.substack.com, pick in your email address. We'll send you uh, the first half of the, uh, the monthly newsletter free, and so you can read all about the big picture view and, and uh, you know, where we see, you know, macro events in the economy taking things. And then if you want to read below the fold, you got to pay $12.50 a month. Um, and, uh, you know, that'll get you access to our full analysis. We look at rates. We look at uh, equity markets. Uh, we make very specific recommendations, both uh, 
long and short on the stock market side, as well as uh, individual issues. Uh, this last issue, Larry, we entitled All Roads Lead to Rome. It was our most popular we've ever written. We've got well, listen, we've got to run now, Jeff, so. but we're going to have you on again soon, my friend. Okay, thank you for joining us today. Sounds great. Take care, Larry. Thanks for you having me on the if you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks. I want to get to you for just a second here to uh, talk to you about the s p because hold on i gotta get oh i gotta get the charts up first i gotta get rid of tesla and this other ones here hold on uh, but we're really close to uh their 61 percent retracement now in the s p we're moving lower which is uh pretty much what we thought it would be doing it's still quite a ways from it let's get this up here so we'll be able to see it here and uh, let me get uh hold on let me get my thing shown up so we can see where the screen is and I go to that one. This is a work okay, I think. Okay, all right, here's where we are. Uh, let me, first of all, you can see we're trading at 43.30. The low's been 43.15. We've had a big round robin up and down, as we've uh, said before. You can see we went up and now we're coming right back down again. Remember the number that we're looking for, and we, we believe in these numbers pretty good, is 43.09, that's right there. So if you go from your high down to your low, you're going to see here, right there is 4309, okay? Now, that is the 61% on the daily. And guess what else it's going to be, folks? It's going to be, I'm going to draw it in so you'll see the pattern pretty easily here. 
you know, we come down and there it is right there. There's where your ABCD would meet it right there below there. If we turn the lights out because we're going to go a lot lower. So you don't want it to close below there. You'd like to come down and hit it here in the next hour or so. Okay, hit it and then rally on the close and you know you've got something pretty good going. Now we got crude oil moving sharply higher, of course. We got gold, you know, sharply higher, of course. And so those are things that you've got to pay, uh, you know, really uh, very, very close attention to as you're watching some of these others. Now, hold on. I wanted to see where we are here uh, in the gold because I uh, resold it here and I'm putting my stop right above there, which I have to risk five dollars on that. But that's really near the longer term picture because there's our number right there at 86 and the high has been 85.10. So we'll see you on the flip side tomorrow, folks. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless.